The second quarter, Form 941, for the tax year 2020 has major changes that will reduce the employer's tax liability. This reduction is to accommodate for tax credits employers are allowed for the qualified COVID-19 sick leave and family leave wages paid to your employees. If your business has taken advantage of any of these credits or loans offered through the new legislation, you should first seek advice from your CPA about your quarterly tax filing. This video is intended only to demonstrate what information is populated on the form and what information you may need to manually enter or adjust when processing your Form 941 through Sage Business Works. This video is not intended as tax advice on how to complete your Form 941. Any questions should be directed to your CPA or tax advisor. The Sage Business Works version 2020 Service Pack 2 will have a new option on the setup screen of the Form 941 to include COVID reporting for those customers who used a single defined task code or other pay for reporting the COVID sick leave or family medical leave. If you did not use task codes or other pays for your reporting, or if multiple task codes or other pays were defined for the COVID-19 reporting, you will need to manually adjust the COVID reporting on your Form 941. New fields have been added to the Form 941 Box 5A 1 and 2 to report the qualified sick leave wages and family leave wages. There is also a worksheet that will calculate the non-refundable credit and the refundable credit for your sick and family leave wages and will populate these amounts in the appropriate fields 11B and 11C on your Form 941. Let's take a look at the 941 second quarter. We access by going to Payroll, Taxes, Print 941. When I select my second quarter and process, our form displays with the wages already populated in our box 5A for the total taxable Social Security wages. Here it shows 14000 $423. As mentioned previously, a new option has been added to the 941 setup screen to include your COVID reporting. Now this option is useful if a single task code ID or single other pay ID was created for the sick pay or family medical leave for your COVID-19 wages. In this example, I did have one employee who was paid COVID sick pay and I created a task ID called employee sick pay or employee COVID. When the report displays on the screen, we can see that it pulled the $800 of qualified sick leave wages from my task code called employee COVID. Originally, the amount on box 5A was $14,423. By including the COVID task code, it now has also reduced the amount of taxable Social Security wages on line 5A by the $800 of qualified sick leave wages. Now, if you did not use task codes or other pays, or if you had multiple other pays or task codes that you created, you will need to manually adjust the amounts that appear in box 5A1 and 2 for the qualified COVID sick and family leave wages. Let's bring up the 941. When the report displays, we can see that we need to adjust the wages that should appear in box 5A 1 and 2. To do that, we need to select the checkbox to load the Worksheet 1 form. Let's go ahead and go to our Worksheet 1. When the worksheet loads, we need to fill out Section 2. Section 2 is where we are going to figure the sick and family leave credit. Any COVID sick 
leave wages should be entered in box 2A. For my company, we had $800. When entered, the worksheet is going to calculate the employer portion of Medicare tax and enter that on line 2C. So we can now see that I have an $811.60 tax credit. Any health insurance expenses that should be allocated to the qualified sick leave wages should be entered in box 2B. For my company, I had $50. The amount of qualified family leave wages should be entered in box 2E. For my company, I did not have any family leave wages reported, so I leave that at zero. If you did have any qualified family leave wages and you had any health insurance expenses that were associated with that, those expenses would be entered in box 2F. I have finished entering my numbers and I'm ready to go back to my page one of the report. So I can now see that the $800 has been populated into box 5A1 from the information I entered in the worksheet. The next step I need to take is I need to reduce the total taxable uh, Social Security wages on box 5A by any amounts that are in 5A1 and 2. For my company, that's $800. So we need to take the $14,423 and subtract the $800. So let's do that now. So my amount should be reduced to $13,623. Next, we need to select the type of depositor. We're going to go to my page two. Page two, part two, is where we select the type of depositor our company is. For me and my company, we are a semi-weekly scheduled depositor. So I'm gonna check that. Once I check that, that indicates to me that I have to also submit a 941 Schedule B. So I say okay. Now, the Schedule B is going to pull the full liability that was calculated in BusinessWorks. So when you calculated your time cards and posted the payroll, whatever liability was calculated is exactly what's going to appear on this Schedule B. Now, it may be reduced by the employer's portion of Social Security that you may have zeroed out during your uh, manual payroll calculation. But basically, this is the full liability that shows on your uh, tax liability screen in BusinessWorks. For my company, the total liability is 3,128,002. ,00 Let's see how this compares to the adjusted tax liability after it's been reduced by my uh, COVID sick and family leave credits. Now what's happened is our box seven, which is the current quarter's adjustment for fractions of cents, is $844.65. So remember, the box seven amount is the difference between what your actual liability is and what was calculated liability. We know there's going to be a difference because we have our qualified uh, sick and family leave wages and credits that are associated with that. In order to make this balance, we have to go to our Schedule B and get our Schedule B reduced by this amount, the 844.65. So let's go to the Schedule B now. That's on page five. Now we recommend that you reduce that amount within the time period when the liability was incurred. For me, that was this liability. I need to reduce this amount by $844.65. So my new number is 121737. If I now go back to the first page, scroll down, we can now see that my total tax liability is the $3,128, which would be correct, and the current quarter adjustment in box seven has now been zeroed out. Let's now go to page two. Page two has now calculated the total taxes. It has brought in exactly the dollar amount that I paid uh, in tax deposits in, uh, to the uh, Internal Revenue Service. For me, I paid the full amount of $3,128.02. ,02. 
However, after my qualified credit, all the adjustments, my tax liability was only $2,283.37. In box 15, I have an overpayment of $861.62. This represents the tax credit for my COVID wages, my employer credit for Social Security wages and employer portion of Medicare, as well as any health insurance that pertains to these COVID wages. Let's quickly review how we can reconcile that the overpayment calculated correctly. The way to do that is to first take the full liability and calculate it as though there was no COVID wages or tax credit. For my company, we had $14,423 in Social Security wages before any COVID wages were reduced. The Social Security portion for both employer and employee was $1,788.45. And same with the Medicare wages before any qualified COVID wages or tax credits, $14,423 in wages. And the Medicare employee and employer portion is $418.27. Looking over at our 941, on line 3, the amount of federal income tax withheld is $970.88. Now, if I add these three together, my full liability for the quarter is $3,177.60. So this was my liability before any COVID wages or tax credit are applied. Now I have a COVID credit. For my company, I had $800.00 in COVID wages. The employer portion, or the 6.2%, is $49.60. I'm also entitled to the employer portion of Medicare, or the 0.145, which is $11.60. I also had the portion of health insurance that was paid of $50. When I total that, that's $911.20. My reduced liability is going to be the $3,177.60 of full liability less my tax credit of $9,1120. My reduced adjusted liability is now $2,266.40. Looking at page 2 of my 941 on line 13a, I can see that I deposited and paid to the Internal Revenue Service three thousand one twenty eight oh two so when I take my reduced liability of twenty two sixty six forty and subtract what I've already paid into the Internal Revenue Service I've overpaid by eight sixty one sixty two as a recap if a single task code or other pay was used for your COVID sick or family leave wages, you can use the new option to include COVID reporting on the 941 setup screen. These amounts will then populate in boxes 5A1 or 2 and it will reduce the amount of taxable wages in box 5A by these amounts. If no task codes or other pays were used, or if multiple task codes or other pays were used, you will need to manually enter the amounts in boxes 5A1 and 5A2 and manually reduce the amount of wages in box 5A by these amounts. There will be a large amount in box 7 adjustment for fractions of cents. This is the reduction of tax liability for the COVID sick and family leave wages. You will need to reduce the liability on Schedule B by this amount. It's important to remember that state support is unable to offer any tax advice. We recommend you contact your CPA or your tax advisor for any questions that you have. This is a very complex form for the second quarter. There's several uh, programs and legislation that's associated with the COVID sick and family leave. And if you had the payment protection plan or if you're deferring any of your liability, for this reason, you must consult your CPA or tax advisor to get the proper reporting. This video was intended only to demonstrate the information that's populated on the form 
from Sage Business Works and what information that you may need to manually enter or adjust when you process the Form 941. This video is not intended as any tax advice on how to complete your Form 941. Any questions should be directed to your CPA or tax advisor. This concludes our video. Thank you for joining us.